What is up you guys? Today we are looking at what the commutative property is in maths, so let's jump into it. Okay, we're going to be looking at what the commutative property is and we're going to be looking at these four example questions here and see how this rule or property applies. So first of all, we can think of the commutative property. Think of the word commutative like commute, which basically means to move. And what it's basically saying is that we can move our numbers in our questions and still get the same answer. And we can do this in both addition questions and the slightly trickier multiplication questions. So let's have a look what I mean exactly, and let's have a look at this addition question, 4 plus 6. When we have the question 4 plus 6, these two numbers are actually called addends. So we spell that like this, A double D E N D S. And it doesn't matter which way around we put these addends, we're still going to get the same number. Watch, if I put 4 plus 6, I'm going to get the answer 10. However, if I flick my add ends the other way around and I put my 4 on the other side and my 6 at the start, add them still together, 4 plus 6 also equals 10. Let's look at it another way. If I have 4 balls, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I add 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it gives me a total of 10. And it's exactly the same as if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 at the start, and one, two, three, four. I still get a total of 10. So addition questions are commutative. It doesn't matter which way around we put our question, we're still gonna get the same answer. Let's have a look at it with this second example, 19 plus 100, 19 plus 100 equals 119. But if I flick my add ends the other way and I have 100 at the start and I plus it to 19, I still get 100. And, 19. and if I was a patient person and could draw out all those circles and balls, I could prove it with that model as well. Let's have a look at multiplication then and see if it works here as well. So 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is 20. But now my 5 and my 4 we don't call add-ins because we're not adding them. We call them factors because they are the factors of 20. And now let's see if I put these the other way around and put my 5 at the end and my 4 at the start. 4 times 5 also equals 20. Let's have a look at that with our footballs. And 5 times 4 can be shown like this. This array, as we call it in multiplication, represents 4 times 5. And 4 times 5 gives me a total of 20. But now if I flip this array around and put it the other way, this array now says 5 times 4. But we also now know that 5 times 4 still equals 20. So multiplication is the same. It doesn't matter which way around we put our question, we're still going to get the same answer. And let's demonstrate it with 8 times 11. 8 times 11 is 88. But also, move mine the other way around. Start with 11 times 8. And 11 times 8 is also 88. So multiplication and addition are both commutative. It doesn't matter which way around we put the numbers in our question. Let's have a little think about subtraction and division quickly. Let's have a question, 5 subtract 3. 5 subtract 3 equals 2. Let's see if we get the same answer moving the digits around. And let's have 3 subtract 5. Well, 3 subtract 5, if I have 3 and take away 5, I'm going to end up in negative numbers, and I'm going to end up with negative 2. So I do not get the same answer if I flip these digits around in my question. So therefore, subtraction is not commutative. Let's have a look at division quickly. If I have 15 and I divide that by 5, I get 3. Let's move our digits around. And now I have 5 and I'm sharing it with 15. Well, this is actually quite a hard question to answer. But I know that my answer is 0 0.33 recurring. And again, definitely not the same answer. So again, division is not commutative. So addition and multiplication are commutative, doesn't matter which way around we put our numbers in the question, but subtraction and division are not. Very important to remember.